Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we want to give a huge shout out to my girl Chelsea for letting me film her lovely nails and share this with you guys on my channel. So a huge shout out to her. But before we get into it, I have a random winner alert. I have been noticing that a lot of you have been very active throughout the years on my channel and also throughout this series. So a huge shout out to you and I love you guys so, so very much. But congratulations to my girl Chrissy75. I'm gonna be sending you a box full of not polished products, nail art stuff, and a bunch of goodies that I hope you really, really love. Comment down below to claim your prize within 24 hours and message me on Instagram so that I can send that out right to you. Again, congratulations and I appreciate every single one of you guys. I hope you enjoy the video. Now let's get right into it. Getting right into today's video, everyone, welcome Chelsea. We're gonna be doing her nails. We're gonna be doing like a very white, beautiful pastel type of set. So first we're gonna be taking my e-file at 4,000 RPMs, along with that I'm using my sanding band and mandrel bit, both from Profiles Backstage, and I'm gonna be just buffing the shine off of her nail. This is gonna help with product adhesion. You want to make sure you do this before you go in with any type of application. Once we buff the shine off of her nail, we're gonna be going in with this diamond bit. It's nice and tapered, so it's gonna be good for those hard to reach areas like that cuticle area. It is fine, so it's not gonna do any damage unless you go up speed and apply a little bit too much pressure. Still have my e-file at 4,000 RPMs, and I'm just strictly using this for that cuticle area, trying to get rid of more of that dead skin. Next, we're gonna be going in with this cuticle ball bit from Profiles Backstage. It has been my go-to. We're still at 4,000 RPMs. For this process, I do like to mention that you can go up a speed if you feel like it's a little bit too dry and you're not able to fully remove it at 4,000 RPM. So always take note of that as well. Just make sure you have very light pressure when you're doing this and you don't wanna stay in one spot for too long, otherwise it will cause heat and it hurts a lot. You're gonna be using that to remove that dead skin very, very gently. Now we're gonna be going in with our tips. For this video, we are using the Universal Tips from Not Polish. These are my favorite when we're gonna be doing a short tapered square or a longer type of coffin nail or just stilettos. They are the perfect shape for that. That's why they're called universal tips. So definitely recommend these if you guys do a lot of coffin nails or even short tapered square. I'm gonna go ahead and apply that using my Young Nails Brush on Glue. That is my all time favorite. Just making sure that they fit sidewall to sidewall. Then we're gonna be taking my nail tip cutters and trimming those to the desired length.
Once I'm done trimming those, I'm gonna be taking my hand file. This is a Tammy Taylor peel and stick file. You can use whatever file you prefer. These are just my favorite go-to and they're really, really easy to sanitize. I'm gonna be going in on the sides, just making sure that everything fits perfectly sidewall to sidewall from her natural nail and the tip. And then just making sure that that tip is nice and squared. Now remember, after you glue the tips on, you want to separate her skin from the tip. If I go in directly to file it without doing that, it will definitely cut her. So you wanna make sure that you fully detach that and it'll be safe for you to go in and file. We're just gonna be going in on the sides and then that tip as well. Next, I'm gonna be going in with my e-file once again at about 6,000 RPMs with my mandrel bit and sanding band that I previously used. And we're just gonna be blending that tip into her nail. I wanna make sure that it is nice and flush so that my acrylic application goes on there flawlessly. This is kind of optional. I don't do it all the time. It just depends what type of design I'm going to be putting on that nail. Now I'm going in with a lint-free wipe and a little bit of Young Nail Swipe. We're gonna be cleaning while dehydrating that nail so it works as a cleaner to remove all that dust, but also dehydrating the nail from any excess oils that our nail beds naturally produce. Next, we're gonna be going in with a Triple X Bond from Not Polish. I'm gonna be adding two coats of that just on her natural nail. We do not need to add any on the tip as the acrylic will adhere to that perfectly fine. I'm gonna be going in with the Milky White from Not Polish. This is my all time favorite Milky White. Definitely recommend if you guys want a good Milky White that is very, very blendable. I'm gonna be going in and doing kind of a cutout design on her pinky nail and then I'm pretty much working my way from the middle section downwards to create that first cut. And I'm focusing on this small portion of acrylic that I applied because I do not want to worry about the cuticle area just yet since I'm gonna be focusing on carving out that straight line. All I'm doing is flattening it out and as I flatten it out, the product will move a little bit more towards the tip. And all I'm doing is making sure that my brush is nice and flat and I'm pretty much just scraping at it until it is nice and straight. And then once I'm done with that line and it is to my liking, I'm gonna go in and infill the rest of that top area, which is that cuticle area. Now that I'm done with that, I can actually fully pay attention to the cuticle without worrying about any overflowing or the acrylic drying too fast while I'm working on both areas. Next, I'm gonna be taking this beautiful periwinkle type of bluish purple color. This one is called For Sure from Kiara Sky. It's one of their all-in-one powders. I'm gonna be taking a small amount to use that as our base. Also, adhesion product for our loose glitter. I'm going in with this beautiful mix from Profiles Backstage. It has like a bluish purple hue to it, which I felt like was gonna match this set perfectly. So I go in first with that base color, layer on that glitter acrylic, and then I'm gonna be going on with some clear to fully encapsulate that, make sure that everything is nice and smooth. We wanna protect that acrylic so that none of it flakes off or we don't file it off at all. So you make sure that you encapsulate that.
Now for the ring finger, we're just gonna be doing a plain white nail, super, super simple, basic acrylic application. We're starting at that middle section, working with the product, working it downwards. I'm using very light pressure when doing this, pretty much just tapping it, guiding the product downwards towards the tip. Always remember to hold that finger in a downward position. You wanna make sure that your liquid to powder ratio is perfect. Otherwise, it's gonna go all over the place or it's gonna dry too quick before you get to move it where you want it to go. Once I have that base thickness that I want, we're gonna start working our way towards the top. That just means we're gonna add another little bead until we hit that cuticle area. Once you get to that cuticle area, always, 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 for sure, hold the finger downwards so that gravity allows the product to flow down and not overflow that cuticle. Now for the middle finger, we're gonna be adding that same periwinkle bluish color, adding it to that cuticle area, blending it downwards. I'm using a very, very thin and small amount of this because we're gonna be layering on some more glitter and then we're gonna be encapsulating. So to avoid thick, thick, thick nails, especially in that area, use an extremely small amount of product and make sure that you're really blending it out. The color is very, very opaque, so you don't have to worry about having to layer on a bunch to get that perfect color very very thin layers with this product is going to do the trick now i'm going to be ombre that milky white up into that glitter from the bottom upwards towards that cuticle area very very light amount of blending the milky white helps honestly when it comes to creating a good ombre so i don't have to worry about doing too much blending and not only that but glitter also allows you to do a very seamless type of ombre as well And again, I'm gonna be adding another cutout type of design. This is just my personal preference of doing it. I've always, for whatever reason, liked the more complicated way. But there are also other ways of doing it. There are tools nowadays that you can use to easily cut out shapes. Just simple lines. You could always use an X-Acto knife. I've seen people use dental floss. I've seen people use another tip. Like there's just so many endless possibilities when it comes to cutting out acrylic. However, I just find this a lot easier while it's setting i'm able to carve it out i just got used to doing it this way because i was so lazy to get my other tools and honestly speaking i got really good at it so it's nothing that i need to change but if you guys want an easier route and you guys are just starting out definitely recommend trying to use a different type of tool versus freehand doing it like i am but i'm just doing that same process we're just applying the acrylic and easily guiding it where you want it to go and then carving it out with the tip of your brush. And then we're gonna be infilling that area once again. This time I actually used clear acrylic to apply the glitter. That way it's nice and sheer, but we still get a good little sparkle through that.
And once everything is nice and dry, we're gonna be going in and filing these nails using my e-file at 11,000 RPMs, along with that I'm using a five and one bit that I actually need to throw away and I realized that during this process, it's a little worn out. So definitely will be replacing my bits here very soon. I'm gonna be going in around that cuticle area, making sure that acrylic is nice and flush. And I'm just going across the entire nail, sometimes horizontally, sometimes vertically, it just depends on what I feel a little bit more comfortable with. And I know that for a fact that the e-file has a good grip and it's not gonna skip or anything like that. I'm just going in, making sure everything is nice and smooth. And then we're gonna finish that on the rest of the nails as well. I'm going to be going in with my hand file once again, fouling the sides, making sure everything is nice and straight. I'm focusing on the sides first and then we move all together onto the tip portion. And you can kind of see me angling my file downwards a little bit and it's because I'm trying to get rid of all of those little scraggly pieces that come off whenever you shape the tips. I know you guys know what I'm talking about, so I'm just trying to remove that all in one motion. So I'm going kind of underneath, and then I make sure I straighten out my file so that I get a nice, straight, sharp line. Going around and flipping the hand to look for a perspective. And we're just gonna be squaring off that tip very carefully, making sure that I'm holding very, very well her nail and it's not wiggling back and forth. To do so, I put my thumb on the front and then the rest of my fingers on the back end of her nail to prevent it from wiggling back and forth and causing any type of discomfort for her. Next, I'm gonna be going in with my buffer from Kiara Sky. I've been switching all over the place because honestly, they're all really, really good. I had a big amount of these in one of my drawers when I was organizing, I found them, so I figured I would go ahead and start using these. But they're a little bit flimsy, not my favorite, but they work, they do the job, so here we are using them. I do like that they're also small and nice and disposable, so you don't feel bad about throwing them away. Dusting off that excess dust, and then we're gonna be going in with the lint-free wipe, a little bit of Young Nail Swipe, cleaning the surface of her nails, making sure that it is nice and dust-free. Next, I'm gonna be going in with the stain-resistant top coat from Young Nails. It is my go-to for any hairstylist or anyone that is prone for staining their nails. Definitely recommend them, especially if they're smokers or anything like that. It works so, so good. So I'm just gonna be lathering that on the surface, making sure that I get a nice, even coat. Then we're gonna be placing that in the light for a full 60 seconds. I like to do two rounds just to be safe. And then always make sure that the top coat is adhering nicely to the nail. Sometimes I've noticed that I get a little bit of crater. So if I do notice that, go ahead and wipe that and then reapply that. Just means you have a little bit of oils on the surface of the nail, which is preventing that top coat from applying evenly.
And then once we are out of the light and everything is nice and dry, we're gonna be cleaning off that tacky layer that that top coat does leave. I'm just using a lint-free wipe and a little bit of Young Nail Swipe to do so. You could also use alcohol if you prefer that or if you don't have Swipe. Swipe is just my favorite, it works for everything. Next, we're gonna be going in with a mix of a lilac purple liner and a very light pastel blue liner, mixing those two to try to get that periwinkle type of color that we used as some of her base color. I'm gonna be using that on a few of the nails and then we're just gonna be working with white on the rest, kind of give it a nice little accent. So here we're just gonna be doing a diagonal type of sweater design, super, super simple. Just two long diagonal lines. That's gonna be kind of like our guide. And then we're gonna be doing pretty much the same type of diagonal lines down the center, also two rows of that. So they're gonna be right next to each other in the middle, like so. I'll be taking a little bit more of my gel paint Always, always, always try to remove the excess. That That's kind of what you're seeing me do right now. If I have a little bit too much on the tip of my brush, I just kind of wipe it on my nail. You can always go back to wherever you have your gel paint, but to me, it's just easier to dab it on my nail, my finger, whatever the case is. And then we're just gonna be connecting the two diagonal lines together, making it kind of a little snake type of vibe. It's easily, easily create sweater nails this way. And then while it is still wet and before we cure it, I'm gonna be sugaring on some of my favorite Pixie Micro Glitter from Profiles Backstage. It's white but has a very, very light hint of purple when the light catches it. It is so pretty, definitely recommend this one. It is one of my favorites for the winter time. And it's perfect for sugaring an entire nail or just designs like this. Now for the pinky, we're also gonna be doing another sweater design. This time we're gonna be covering the entire white portion of that nail. Same concept, two lines down the sides, and then we're gonna be creating that very effortless type of knitted sweater design. Now for this one, I'm also gonna be doing tiny little dots down the sides, just using a very small dotting tool from Profiles Backstage. And then we're gonna be going back in with that same glitter, sugaring it on top before we cure it in the light. Once we have that glitter nice and on there, we're gonna be curing that in the light for a full 60 seconds. I like to do two rounds just to be safe, or you could always do the 90 second option on your LED lights. Most of them have them nowadays. I am using my Kiara Sky for reference. Topping this set off with a little bit of cuticle oil, but that pretty much concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a ton, and I'll see you guys next time.